Hey there, bloomers and friends. Rev Kev coming to you from the Palm Springs office, as you can see. I am um, thinking today about the fact that this is the day that, and I put this on Facebook, that is uh, the start of the, um, the, the, the call, uh, the cry, the grito, the cry for Mexican independence from Spain. And um, it's interesting to me that uh, a Roman Catholic priest uh, uh, issued that call first and in Mexico and um, Dolores, Mexico, and um, then uh, uh, had it be that it went for um, the poor people and uh, those to rise up for working for independence. And the, the war for their independence lasted for 10 years. But um, this September 16th is the day that's often noted. But from what I understand, the call was actually uh, made in, in front of the, uh, the church that the priest was the pastor of um, he, at 11 o'clock at night on the 15th. Um, I posted some of this on, on Facebook. This is a part of Mexican history. And now the thing about that is that sitting where I'm sitting right now and living where we live right now, if we were to attach our history to the land, that means that's our history too. Because at the time in 1810 when this began, um, Mexico, uh, the California area here where we are was a part of Mexico. And uh, it, it uh, wasn't until decades later after the Mexican-American War and all of that that the, bo the boundary was sort of established and the, um, uh, you know, California and, and uh, Arizona and so forth emerged and, uh, as um, uh, the, the uh, states, the areas that we are now. <clears throat> the thing about that is that um, this is an important thing that needs to be kept in mind when we talk about things like immigration or when we talk about Mexicans or when we talk about people um, in the sense that uh, uh, we, are, we are on land that used to be somebody else's. Now, we also know that in the, you know, New England um, with uh, uh, the situation there of the uh, Pilgrims and the Massachusetts Bay Colony being started. We know that where I came from in Wisconsin, where uh, we lived, the river that ran through town was the, well actually it's the bluff above the river, was the border between the Chippewa Indians and Winnebago in the north and the Blackfoot Indians um, uh, in the south. The Winnebago in the south and east, Blackfoot south and west, and the Chippewa uh, Indians to the north. Did you get that where they were? I'm, I'm like, you know, did you get those boundaries? I grew up with those. Um, and that was the same kind of thing, except I was never taught about that. And what really raised this in my mind was that I happened to be uh, watching some Australian TV, which led to me to be watching some Australian YouTubes and to be watching some Australian um, speeches uh, being made in the Australian Parliament. And the beginning of each speech, uh, the people would uh, thank the original owners of the land upon which they were meeting. Can you imagine if we started doing that? That at the beginning of each meeting we began to say, I acknowledge the, the original owners of the land upon which we are meeting and the elders that have been here before us. Can you imagine that? That's not a part of our culture. But the thing about it is I think that that sort of action is a step toward healing in this whole business that we're dealing with called systemic racism. And just knowing history, knowing cultures, and trying to respond to them in some sort of credible way is a first step for us to be doing that. Um, I am uh, thinking about that in the sense that uh, we have so much malarkey, as someone is known to say, being tossed about as far as um, the uh, 
uh, the 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 whites, you know, the, that that there are people that have more rights to land than other people do. And I, I and and what I'm saying about that is it's sort of like we own it, so it's ours. That kind of attitude. Well, that kind of attitude is not a caring, compassionate, or loving attitude. It is true that by the standards of today, there's legalities today. You know, I just, when I'm looking at the San Bernardino Mountains, looking at the outlines of the fires going on up there, I find that there's something up there um, on uh, San Bernardino Peak, close to there, called Washington Monument and I look at it and I learn that's the first thing that was driven in the ground to start being a location for people to start laying out the boundaries for the white people to start having an understanding of what the boundaries of land would be and what the measurements would be in order to establish the development of this land. So all of this thing, all of this is swirling around and maybe you can't follow what I've just said because I'm, my head is all over the place. But all that I want to say is that as, as we're thinking about the fires, as we're thinking about the election, as we're thinking about systemic racism, and as we're thinking about the ministries of our church, let us always be looking for the um, action that will give honor to those who have gone before us, and respect to those who are around us and to be checking the kinds of biases and lack of information we have that contribute to the kinds of ways in which we contribute to ways of hurting people. Um, and what we really want to do is turn that around and help people and be in good relationships with people for the future. Just getting oriented in some of these topics is a beginning to do that. I hope that you're with us on Sunday in worship. Uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, Facebook Live broadcasting. We're looking forward to uh, a little bit of an acknowledgement of Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, which is happening in these days to come. The High Holy Days of the Jewish Heritage are uh, happening in the uh, next couple of weeks. Um, we also will be uh, you know, acknowledging that this is Hispanic Awareness Month from September 15th to October 15th. And that word Hispanic was basically developed as a catch-all phrase for all the Latinx cultures. But let's remember that that's Puerto Ricans, Caribbeans, Central Americans, Mexicans, Cubans, and even to the point of going, you know, Guatemalans, Nicaraguans, and Panamanians. All of this uh, is a part of that Latinx culture and beyond. And just the fact that we can even make those distinctions is again a first step at majority white organizations having an aspect of uh, respect and honor. And we're trying to do that uh, in our church as well as we are uh, committed to uh, embracing our diversity. Um, and we're looking forward to that. One more thing, Sorry. we're gonna be having a, a, a leadership retreat on Saturday morning. Uh, we have a consultant um, that is going to be uh, meeting with the, uh, I think there's going to be 14 or 15 persons of the Bloom Open Leadership Group that are going to be on the Zoom retreat for a while. And we're concentrating on the um, uh, knowing that we are five years away from one of the 10 year goals, you know, processes that we had established in 2015 and as I'm looking on the wall we're going to be talking about how we can be a multi-generational and multi-cultural um, uh, congregation multi-generational and multicultural and how diversity can be working for us as well keep us in your prayers for that we hope to see you as a part of our congregation on Sunday and as always please keep us in your prayers